AI agents are simply programs that use AI models to accomplish a variety of tasks. They combine the power of traditional software that's written as code with the flexibility of large language models or other AI models that are trained on a large data set. This allows the AI agents to accomplish a larger variety of tasks and do it in a more flexible way. Now, there is a lot of hype and misconceptions surrounding AI agents, so I want to clarify how they actually work so you have an understanding of the current capabilities and where things are headed next. Now, some people think that AI agents are just going to end the world, and those people might actually have a point, so I'll get to that in the end of the video. But first, let's talk about the misconception in the differences between AI models and AI agents, because a lot of the time, People will use those terms interchangeably, but they have some very significant differences, which I'll explain. So AI models are generally built with a specific purpose, and they are trained on a large variety of data. So a large language model, such as GPT-4, looks at a lot of different text and figures out how to predict the next token or word in a sequence. So when you ask it a question, there's some additional logic where it's been trained to answer questions, and then it knows from its billions of different sentences that it's seen what sort of answer would likely follow the type of question that you propose to it. Now, based on everything we've seen, these models do seem to generalize to some degree. It's not perfect, but they do see some patterns and that gets stored in their model weights. So at the end of the day, a model, once it's been trained, is really just a large set of numbers. And then when you input some text into it or an image or, you know, it depends on the kind of model that it is. But when you submit some input, that input goes through all of these different numbers and there's a lot of matrix multiplication that happens and at the end of that process you get a large set of numbers in response which then gets converted into a response such as you know actual text that gets sent to you so when you think about it this way you can see that an ai model can't actually do anything it simply receives some data as input does a bunch of matrix multiplication, and then send some data as output, whether that be text or some data that represents an image or a video, maybe it generated something, but it's ultimately just data that it responds to the user with. AI agents, on the other hand, use traditional software to integrate with a bunch of different tools and functions that they can call. That means they're actually interacting with the real world and not just doing matrix multiplications, but actually calling APIs and having some sort of impact. They use AI models along with the user's input to figure out which API calls to make or what actions to take, but the integrations themselves are implemented in regular code. One final word about models before we talk about the agent architecture is that some people say, you know, these models are getting smarter and they're going to be able to do this, that, and the other thing. But again, just remember, AI models can't do anything other than generate a response for you. So they're not going to go out there and, you know, hit the big red button and fire some nukes. Only agents are capable of that. Here we are. Now keep in mind that there are different AI agent frameworks and they might implement these things in a different way, but I'm giving a high level general purpose overview so that you can understand, generally speaking, how they work. So I've drawn this architecture here and we're looking at an AI agent as a whole. And you see the AI model is really just a small part of it. And there's all this other stuff. These are different tools, integrations, code that is a part of the AI agent or that the AI agent interacts with. If we're talking about a simple AI model, we might have just a user input and it goes into the AI model and we get an output. There might be some kind of application on top of the AI model, like ChatGPT, that's going to do some prompt engineering for you and stream the response back to you. But at the end of the day, the AI model, like I was saying, is doing some math behind the scenes and is just going to give you a standard output. The AI agent is actually going to wrap a lot of that stuff in additional code and integrate with other tools. So the way this will typically work is that user will submit some input to the AI agent. And the AI agent is really just a traditional program. It might have an API sitting on top of it, or it might be based on a command line interface, but there's gonna be some way to give it a task of something to do. And 
that's going to go into this main code. Now I'm gonna replace the word code with a scarier word, but don't be afraid because it's simple actually. And this will be called the orchestrator. Why? Because it orchestrates all of the activities and it essentially just controls the flow of this entire program. It's going to make the decisions on what to do next. So generally speaking, it'll receive a request from the user to accomplish some sort of task, and it will forward that to an AI model to construct a plan. So first we'll receive a task, then we'll generate plan using the AI model. So we will ask the AI and give it some sort of engineered prompt that says, you know, you are an AI agent and you, your task is to do this, create a plan for how you would like to execute that. And then we're going to recursively execute all of the steps that the AI plan has decided on. Because the plan is dynamically generated when we call the AI model, it is possible that we are gonna have steps that then require additional steps. And that's why we're doing all of this recursively. So any one of these steps might generate additional tasks that need to be executed. And that is the power of the AI agent is that it is able to execute on all of those tasks in sequence. And then as new tasks come up, it will execute on those as well. So let's use a concrete example to help you understand how this might work. Let's say we want to generate a research report and look through a number of different papers, figure out the relevant sections that apply to what we're trying to generate a report about, and then extract them, put them together, summarize them, and then generate a final research summary that is going to be returned to the user. Let's say we have this research agent and a user submits a task that is along the lines of, uh, find and summarize all of the research related to crocodile vision tests. So we received the task, we generated our plan, we have a list of tasks that's probably gonna get stored in a database somewhere, and then we're going to execute on each of those steps. The orchestrator is gonna decide what to do next. It might use functions to get some data or call some APIs to take action. In our case, it's going to be retrieving the different articles from some sort of research knowledge base. And hopefully it knows the API to call. That's what we're gonna bake into the agent. We're gonna bake in the different capabilities that it has, which are gonna be represented as these functions. And then the other thing it can do is retrieve or store memories. So as it retrieves these articles, we're probably gonna want to store that in a database so that when we call the AI model to summarize them, we have those on hand. And we can call the AI model for the future step of doing the summarization and pass that data to the AI so that we can get a nice summary of that article. And these are all gonna be different steps that this orchestrator keeps track of in its database. And again, this is gonna be up to the AI agent framework to implement how they will, but oftentimes you will have some sort of table that's gonna store all of these different task steps that you're gonna execute on. The other thing I will say is that these functions could also be implementing code. So let's say we have some code to extract statistics about a particular article, like maybe the number of citations or the authors. We could write some code and have a function that handles all of those different aspects. So perhaps we have two tasks after we retrieve the article. One is to pass the whole article to an AI model to get a summary. And another one is to extract some structured data about the article so that we can store that in our database as well for one of the future steps. And a lot of the time when you're building an agent like this, there will be an agent framework that does this general purpose stuff, but then you're gonna be constructing all of this additional logic and specifying the capabilities, different APIs it can call, how it should store all of these memories. And this is going to be very custom based on the specific task that you want this agent to be able to handle. Ultimately, as we roll through all of those steps and the orchestrator is keeping track of what it needs to do, at some point it's gonna to get to a point where it believes it is done, and then it is going to respond to the user based on the way that we have this whole thing configured, based on the interface of the agent, whether that's an API or some kind of command line interface, or maybe we even have a website that is gonna display the results to the user. The thing I'd like to point out here is that we do interact with these third-party tools. So in our example, we had to retrieve these articles. So we built a function that is going to be able to call this API and retrieve the research, but this could also have some consequences. Like let's say we're building an agent to book vacations. 
Well, we could create a function that's gonna go and book hotels for us and charge our bank account, or maybe we're building an AI agent that is going to execute trades for us. These actions have some serious consequences, and so it can often be a good idea when you're building these agents or creating these frameworks to have a decision step in the orchestrator that makes it reach back out to the user to confirm certain actions that it should or should not take. This really reduces the risk, but you're still relying on the orchestrator and the AI model being intelligent enough to figure out when to escalate to the user. So it can definitely be a risky idea to start building these functions that have massive consequences when you're not sure how the AI model is gonna respond. Now, some people will look at this and think, wow, this is gonna just automate everything, right? And it might eventually, but right now, AI models don't do a very good job of planning. And so as you take all of these recursive steps, things just get lost in translation and the AI loses a lot of the context of what it needs to do. So we really need to make a lot of innovations in helping AI plan. And perhaps that is going to be purely a coding sort of layer that we add to this. And we need to be able to track tasks and figure out the context that we need to add. So building an effective AI agent framework really is a pretty significant challenge. Now, my opinion is that agents aren't quite ready for the mainstream as of July 2024, but companies are working on this stuff. The most recent attempt is Devin, the AI software engineer, but I definitely think that got a bit overhyped and I have a related video on that, so make sure to check it out. Also in that video, I do actually go into doing some coding so you can see how an AI agent could be constructed from the ground up. Okay, now that you have an understanding of how AI agents work, you might be thinking, well, what's so dangerous about this? It's pretty much just regular software, right? And to some degree that's true, but the problem is that you can't exactly predict what the AI models are going to respond with and what sort of actions that's gonna force your software to take. This is where the AI risk really comes into play. So to me, AI models are not very risky because you're just taking some user input and doing matrix multiplication, generating an output, and then responding to the user. So it's really up to the user to do with that information as they will. And then in traditional software, you're going to be able to write programs and have some predictability about what's going to happen when you run that program. But with an AI agent, when you combine those two things together, you lose a lot of predictability. And we already are losing our understanding of how these AI models work as they get more and more complicated. And so predicting that is a challenge on its own. Predicting what that combined with executing software is gonna do is even more difficult. And so that's where I think the risk really comes into play when, when you add agency to the AI models. Now, I think there is a way to handle this from like a policy perspective, and that is essentially to hold people accountable for the AI agents that they start. Just as we would with somebody that writes a program and runs it, well, it's your responsibility for what your agent is going to do. We also need to continue to rely on our traditional security best practices because one of the best ways to limit what the AI agents can do is to limit the environment that they're in, to limit the API calls that they can make and the resources that they have access to. As long as we constrain the AI agents in a certain environment and we don't give them incentives to take actions that are going to be negative, I think we're gonna be able to use these tools to our advantage, but I do think there is some potential risk. So we need to think about AI agent frameworks in a way where we can limit the capabilities of the AI agent and keep it focused. And this is really the whole challenge with AI alignment. So I'm looking forward to seeing how we can align AI agents over time. And I think a big part of that is gonna be getting feedback from actual people. So instead of the agent taking all of the actions on its own, I think it's a really good idea to have a human in the loop. And when the agent becomes uncertain, and we need to hone that capability of it knowing when it's uncertain about something, uh, it should go ahead and ask the human for some input before it takes further action. So I think we will reach that sort of symbiosis eventually, but that is definitely 
an important area of focus for AI researchers and developers. So when we're thinking about the question of how could AI agents end the world, there is a thought experiment by Nick Bostrom that is called the Paperclip Maximizer. And in this thought experiment, essentially there is an AI agent that is given the task of creating as many paperclips as it can. And as it creates its plan and as it executes on all of the tasks, it realizes that, well, the best way to create more paper clips is to, you know, kill everybody on Earth and to manufacture them as easily as possible so that nobody gets in its way. Now, I do think that's a very extreme sort of case for AI agents, but it is possible if you have very misaligned incentives and if you have a program that you give too much power to and it is able to have enough capability to actually access and hack systems, uh, do I think this is likely? Personally, no. There are some people that think it is going to happen. But overall, I think we do have systems in place to limit AIs in a way to prevent that sort of situation. One thing I will say is that I do think AI agents do pose a bigger risk than AI models because AI models have a very clear boundary in what they're able to accomplish and what they're able to do, whereas AI agents it becomes a lot more unpredictable and they're actually taking actions that impact the real world. Hopefully this video helped you get a better understanding of AI agents. And if you're curious to see how you might actually implement some of this as code and some of the limitations of the current AI agents, check out this related video about Devin, the AI software engineer, where I go down into the details of how to actually build something like that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you there. Take care.